Addison disease is the topic for this video. And Addison disease is basically when the adrenal gland is uh, not functioning properly, usually because of destruction. And the two hormones that we're going to discuss are uh, aldosterone and cortisol. So in Addison's disease, you have basically a uh, deficiency of the adrenal gland, so you'll have low levels of these hormones. So before we get into symptoms and signs and all that, let's talk a little bit about these hormones that are normally produced by the adrenal gland. What does aldosterone do? Well, aldosterone normally increases the sodium level in your blood and decreases the potassium level. Uh, cortisol normally is responsible for increase, increasing glucose levels. Now in Addison's disease, because you have a deficiency, you will have the opposite results because these hormones are either absent or very low in number. So in Addison's disease, you will have hyponatremia, low sodium levels in the blood, and you have hyper, and you will have hyperkalemia. And then similarly, uh, because of this uh, cortisol deficiency, you have hypoglycemia. Aldosterone is also uh, responsible for um, regulation of blood pressure because it normally brings back sodium into the bloodstream and brings back uh, water as well. So when you don't have that, the fluid that normally comes back into the bloodstream is not as um, abundant. So you have a low uh, blood pressure. Another thing that um, is very common um, in Addison's is something called hyperpigmentation. Now this is a very important part of Addison's disease um, and it's important to understand why and I'll explain why this happens. Um, probably every licensing exam question on Addison's disease will have hyperpigmentation. Either they'll talk about um, freckles or or some discoloration of the skin. So why does this happen? Well, in Addison's disease, you have very low levels of cortisol because the adrenal gland is uh, deficient and normally the adrenal gland produces cortisol. So what happens is the adrenal gland normally has a negative feedback uh, to the pituitary to the pituitary gland so when the adrenal gland is working normally and you have normal levels of cortisol there's a negative feedback that goes back to the pituitary and says look we don't need any more cortisol in Addison's disease what you have is you have very low levels of cortisol so this negative feedback doesn't work so as a result, the pituitary keeps making ACTH in high quantities because it no longer has the negative feedback regulation. Now here's the, the most important part. What happens is, before ACTH is produced, there's a gene that's produced called POMC. And this gene is actually later broken down into two separate hormones, MSH and ACTH. So when you have increased levels of POMC, you have increased levels of MSH and ACTH. That's what later goes to, to the adrenal gland and stimulates the adrenal gland to produce cortisol and uh, aldosterone. Um, but in Addison's disease, the adrenal gland is unresponsive. But the POMC gene also produced another uh, hormone, and that is MSH. And what is MSH? MSH is melanocyte stimulating hormone. And that is the hormone that causes the direct hyperpigmentation. So very important uh, point to remember. So now we have diagnosis. Well, the diagnosis is directly related to all the hormones involved. So because we have low levels of aldosterone, 
your uh, blood test will show. And then you can also measure cortisol levels in the bloodstream, and of course those will be low. And you can also measure ACTH levels, and those will be high. And then there's one other diagnostic test, it's called the ACTH stimulation test. And what that is, is that you give the person ACTH as an injection, um, either IM injection or IV. And then what you do is you measure cortisol levels. And in Addison's disease, cortisol levels will remain low. Why? Because the ACTH that you've given them is not able to act on the adrenal gland because the adrenal gland is simply not functioning. So that's the ACTH stimulation test. And then finally, the treatment is very straightforward. You give replacement of the hormones that are deficient. So we were deficient in um, aldosterone. So you give fludrocortisone. And this is a, a um, mineralocorticoid that's given to replace aldosterone. And then you give hydrocortisone. which is used to replace cortisol because it's identical to cortisol. So let's uh, do a quick recap. Addison's disease is primary adrenal insufficiency. Okay. And then symptoms include uh, uh, hyperpigmentation, really the, the specific symptoms because there's a lot of general symptoms but the general symptoms are not very uh, uh, diagnostic. Lab tests will show uh, elevated um, potassium, low sodium, uh, high ACTH levels, and low ACTH, and uh, low cortisol levels. And uh, the treatment is basically by giving the replacement of the uh, hormones that they are not able to produce, so hydrocortisone, fludrocortisone. All right, great. So let's get into some clinical vignettes and let's take a look at what this looks like in a patient presentation. 53-year-old man comes to the physician because of progressive weakness and weight loss. He says that he's begun noticing areas of skin getting darker, even though it's winter and he's never been in the sun. He takes no medications and has no medical conditions. Physical exam shows abnormalities, no abnormalities, except orthostatic hypotension and hyperpigmentation of the skin. Lab studies are as follows. What is the most likely diagnosis? Well, this is low. Normal is 135 to 145. Normal. This is high. Normal 3.5 to 5.0. So we got hyper. Uh, but kalemia and hyponatremia, hyperpigmentation, low blood pressure. Most likely, he's got Addison's. Next one. A 45-year-old woman with AIDS and disseminated histoplasmosis complains of profound weakness, fatigability, anorexia, weight loss, diarrhea. Lab investigation revealed a serum sodium of 132, which is low, and a serum potassium of 5.8, which is high pH 7.58. Skin hyperpigmentation is seen. Which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Another question, pretty much very similar, uh, very diagnostic for primary adrenal, adrenal cortical insufficiency, also known as Addison's disease. And finally, a 42-year-old woman with no history of prior surgery complains of extreme weakness and fatigability that has persisted for the past five months. She reports nausea and vomiting, cramps, and has trouble keeping solid foods down. She is hypotensive, and blood pressure falls even more upon standing. She notes increased freckling around the eyes, and on examination, her palmar creases appear darkened. Serum potassium is 6.5, which is the following most likely diagnosis.
again another present patient presentation in which you have a lot of the diagnostic clues and lab values that are consistent with Addison's disease.